What's going on, Husker fans? Ethan Buys, Four Hours of Lincoln. Uh, gonna be brutally honest here. I had a pretty lazy week of writing. Uh, I don't know what it is. I, to fatigue, something. I don't know what it is, but just haven't took my notes very well this week. So uh, bear with me on this show. Um, I had my uh, gut reaction on the football game last night, very late last night, as I took the wife out to dinner for her birthday. Happy birthday to her, by the way. Today is actually her birthday. Um, on that note, uh, yeah, I didn't take very many notes, so um, it's kind of hard to figure out what to talk about, but I'll start with that football game last night. Um, uh, just kind of go over the stats that we allowed 56 yards rushing, uh, which also means um, we are right now currently ranked first in rush defense. So that's a pretty awesome achievement for us. That That's something to look at, uh, especially going up against Michigan next week. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But uh, we, while we had, um, oh, what was it, 347 yards on the ground ourselves, so um, not too bad. That's kind of about where we want it, I would think. Uh, and that's just who we are. We are not this spread eagle, throw down the field 50 million times a game type of team. We are... Our identity always have and always will be pound the rock all game, wear defenses out, because that is just what we do. That is the Nebraska way. Um, yeah, so on that note, um, let's see, we, we only chucked the ball 18 times. Eight completions all game. It seemed like a lot more than that, but... Uh, well, stats don't lie. That's what it's showing me right here. So, eight, 18 passes, 8 completed, while Louisiana Tech attempted to pass 42 times. They had 27 completions. I bet more than half of those were to smoke Harris. He was just having a day, as he, I guess usual for that team. Um, total offensive yards. Oh... Uh, Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not the stat I was on. My bad. Um, we had... There's no way we had... Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't read today. We Both both teams had three fumbles uh, the, during the game. I didn't realize. Three, we had three? Uh, okay. It's, I, do, I don't remember. I mean, I remember when um, Harbor got blindsided and lost the football, but we ended up getting that one back. But I don't remember the other two. Um, we only had six penalties, so that's a plus. I mean, we got fewer penalties than Louisiana Tech, so that's all. Awesome. Louisiana Tech had 12 penalties, and that, uh, 100 yards worth of penalties. For, for Louisiana Tech. Well, we have 55. Ugh, excuse me. Um, I'm not going to go over punting kick, kickoffs. Uh, we got to address the kicking situation, especially for field goals. We missed completely wide on our one long field goal attempt. Uh, who was that? Bleak Road? Or no, that was Bleak Road with the fake, which was also another awesome play. But, uh, yeah, we, um, what do you do about that? We ain't got a reliable kicker, it looks like. We can't make a 40-yarder. So that, that appears to be a problem. You know, um, I mean, but really, special teams has been playing really good all year. We, we've made our share of mistakes in this game, but um, hopefully we bounce back. Uh, obviously, you can't make these kind of stupid, dumb, boneheaded decisions against Michigan. 
that's for a fact. You just you can't fuck up against Michigan at all, to be brutally honest. So any kind of woe we have right now, it all needs fixed before Michigan, or we're just in a whole heap of trouble. But I will say this. I'm not really afraid of Michigan. They don't really wow me as a number two team. I don't think they'll finish a season number two, to be brutally honest. And, you know, to be quite fair, you know, last time they came to Memorial Stadium, which I was at that game, by the way, um, they were in some trouble. We about had that. A lot of the folks say the refs handed Michigan that game, whatnot. Well... We handed them that game with our dumb mistakes that we make. And that's why I got, I'm i saying we have got to quit making dumb, boneheaded mistakes. Whether it's a penalty or whether it's snapping the ball at the right damn time. You know, anything. Uh, kickers. Like, you got to just not make mistakes. You got to play good, clean football. And, you know, if we can just run the ball on Michigan, you know, and, of course, they're going to score their points. I mean, that's just going to happen. But, uh, you know, if we d can just hold on the ball, it, and this will show if our defense is actually legit as well. Um, that's another thing that be said. Uh, Got to, I mean, We'll see. We'll see how the defense goes. Um, I feel like our defense is going to have a pretty good game against Michigan. That's just me. I could be eating my words, but um, I don't know. I just have a good feeling we're going to have a nice defensive day against Michigan. We had a bad day against Louisiana Tech. I think we're going to be pissed off and have a good day against Michigan. I, I just feel it. I there's just that something inside of me. Plus, I'll be at the game. So, maybe another added ounce of luck for the game since I my presence will be there. Um, so, anyway. Um, let's see. Oh, and Cyrus Allen for Louisiana Tech also had themselves a good game. Uh, let's see. Heinrich Harburg got the most, uh, well, he didn't get the most carries, but he got the most yards, 183 yards. Uh, and he broke out that 72-yard run. That, to me, and this might be over saying things, but it looked like a classic Eric Crouch slash Taylor Martinez-esque type of play. It, it just... Seemed like a nice classic run that we're going to remember for a while. That was an awesome run. I mean, we may not rem remember it for a while because of see, cause we're just not having recent success. But again, we all remember that Taylor Martinez run against Wisconsin, and that game was went to the shitter real quick. Uh Anthony Grant, he, he got 139 yards on the ground. Uh, he had himself an excellent day. 22 touches as well. Uh, the guy is just getting uh, work. And, and you know, I, I'm sure he enjoys it, but at the same time, we can't be overdoing it either with just one man, you know? And I think that it's crucial when we play Michigan. We gotta find a way to give Heinrich, Jeff Sims, and Anthony Grant the ball. I think that's a must, uh, especially when you know our other two running backs are more. Uh, um, what's the word? Not skilled, but. Uh, or veterans, they're not necessarily veterans either, but that had the most, more playing time than the next running backs we have coming up, dude, uh, since they're out for the season. So, um, yeah, that's we, we, we got to find a way to get these guys the ball more, like more clever ways, obviously. Um, 
because we're probably not going to be able to pass on Michigan. I I just don't think it's real relative that we're going to. I mean, uh, they they got some excellent defenders there, so we we need to find clever ways to run the ball and run the clock if we can. I mean, it, it's gonna be a challenge. Don't get me wrong. I say I'm not scared of Michigan, but it's still gonna be a challenge. They're, I mean, they're obvious. They're number two team in the country, you know. So they're playing great football. So I mean, it it is what it is. So, um, Chubba Purdy did come in for a play. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, they're at the end of the almost. Uh, it was after the rain delay or whatever, the lightning delay. Chubba Purdy came in, so it's like, well, what happened to Heinrich? So I, I don't know. I, um, who knows what went on with that? But nobody said he got hurt either. So I don't know. I, I guess that's the time to put him in. I mean, we we're gonna win the game anyway. So even though uh, it didn't seem like we we're really uh, critical into trying to score a touchdown at the end either to maybe keep the spread. But it is what it is. I I mean, it really should have been a 7-28 ball game. I, uh, that last touchdown Louisiana Tech got after the rain delay, that ball, he, that receiver didn't even catch the ball. <laughs> And the re uh, if you watch like the replay, the ball bounced off the ground. So I I don't know. I mean the refs didn't even look at it. Nobody did nothing. They just said oh touchdown and that was it. So um, it is what it is. Wait, I'll say we covered the spread, even though they got their fourteen points on the board. Anyway, uh, Billy Kemp uh, seems to be the only real production on uh, in the passing game at all, which is fine. I mean, uh, Thomas Fedoni, though, he's, I don't know. I, I say that, but, I mean, we do got Alex Bullock, and we got Thomas Fedoni. So, you know, we got three productive uh, wideouts. Um Alex Bullock, who scored the first touchdown of the season, only got the ball twice. Um, but yet he uh, only got 14 yards. Thomas Fedoni got the lone touchdown of the day with three targets. He got 29 yards. And Billy Kemp had eight. Uh, okay, let me back this up. Alex Bullock got one catch. I, I wasn't reading it right. Alex Bullock got one catch on two targets. Thomas Fedoni got one catch off of three targets. Billy Kemp, five off of eight targets. And Billy Kemp got 62 yards. Um, so he, he seems like the favorite for Harper, which is fine. I mean, every quarterback's got a favorite. It looked like Alex Bullock was going to be your, uh, Jeff Sims' favorite, so... Who knows with all that, but Jeff Sims also locks in on his receivers before the play even begins. Uh, but other than that, our, def um, our defense, you know, played our play defense and they played it real well. Uh, Zach Zima, uh, oh, that's for Louisiana Tech, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, Omar Brown, of course, he had uh, the most tackles of the day. No sacks for anybody. That that surprises me because I could have sworn we got sacked, but nobody got a sack today, which I think that this first game we didn't get a sack in. Uh, but you know what? Off the Colorado game, don't we still leave the nation in sacks? I, I don't know. Um... Yeah, I mean, nothing, no turnovers at all. Oh, well, except for the, was, 
Was it Omar Brown that picked it off at the end? Yeah. So, other than that, no turnovers all game. And this defense is due for a pick six. Like, it's going to happen at some point this year. We're going to get a pick six. But they're so overdue for one. And we need one bad. We need something to amp that defense up. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, Omar Brown with his seven solo tackles. Josh Bullock got in. Isaac Gifford only got two tackles for the day. Um, Blaze Gunnarsson got in on on one. Luke Reimer. Uh, now, is Luke, did Luke Reimer ever get back in the game? Let me know in the comments. Because I, I didn't see if he did or not. He was pretty quiet uh, ever since going to the tent, but I never saw if he came back or not, so let me know what you think. Um, but anyway, on to Michigan. We'll see the Wolverines this coming sat Saturday, and, um, you know, don't lose hope. I mean, everybody, of course, is already saying, well, we're just going to get steamrolled or whatever, but you know what? They're... I, I've seen worse stuff sets, you know, and shit. I mean, we we almost beat them the last time they were here, and there's no doubt about it. These guys are going to be amped up. They're going to be ready to play these guys. So, but I don't think we're going to get steamrolled at all, you know. Everybody thinks it, and I'll let them think that, but I'm not really scared of Michigan. They do not wow me in any way. They... I mean, they play solid, sound football, for sure. And they are a good team. They're a great team. And they are ranked for a reason. But, you know, to me, there's, there's really no clear-cut powerhouse right now. You can maybe make the case for Oregon, who just absolutely demolished Colorado, which makes me very happy, by the way. It usually wouldn't make me happy with a team that actually beat us to get beat and hammered like that. But with the media hype with Deion Sanders and all that jazz, I, I'm, I'm happy for it. I'm ready to shut that shit down. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Colorado got spanked. So, which isn't good news for us either because it shows how far off we are. But you know what? We already know we're uh, rebuilding, trying to put something together anyway. And, but hopefully none of our guys watch videos like this because then they'll be like, oh, shit, yeah, we're not. No, no. don't even think like that. You go out and play the game. But, um, yeah, so... I don't really have much more about this uh, Louisiana Tech game or a preview on Michigan. I, I know Michigan's going to be tough. They're going to be a challenge. But, you know, we need to embrace those challenges. Bob Devaney got it done. Got, got something cooking when he went to Ann Arbor and beat them. That's when, like, the Devaney Osborne... Dynasty started. Maybe it can start here. That's pretty bold of me to say. I may very well eat these words. But that's just kind of a foreshadowing type of thing right there. Uh, I said it, so if it does indeed happen, I can say I said it. <laughs> but, uh... Um, let's move on uh, what happened the rest of this week. So we had other things going on this week um, in the world of Husker Athletics. And uh, one of them being uh, we just had a soccer game uh, before I started recording this. And we dropped the match to number four ranked Penn State. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but... Uh, so we had the two soccer games. We had a softball scrimmage on Thursday. I'll get to that. Uh, the Milwaukee Tennis Classic for the men's team. And a uh, volleyball game against Ohio State, a ranked Ohio State team that we won. 
and one later tonight against uh, 12th-ranked Minnesota. So that'll be a fun one to watch. I believe that'll be maybe a four-setter, I'm going to guess. Maybe a sweep. But uh, the way we're looking, we're, I, I don't know. We're looking really good. But um, so I will begin with the softball scrimmage just to get that out of the way. Not a lot happened. Uh, Scarlet shuts down Cream four to nothing. Uh, Emerson Cope had a star studded night, pitching three scoreless innings and going one for three at the plate, which included a three run hit for her. So um, that's something to look at. Uh, that's her second game. Uh, where she provided some offense for the Husker softball squad. And we already had a decent offense. I know we lost the Andrews sister. Yeah, we did. We lost the Andrews sisters, which is a pretty big hit. But it looks like Emerson Cope's going to be the next one up to lead the charge on hitting and whatnot. Of course, Jordy Ball, I mean, how can we deny her in her pitching? Um, let's see, Samantha Bland, also a freshman, scores a run as well for the Scarlet. Jordy Ball did start for the Cream, but only pitched four innings, allowing only one hit and five strikeouts. Of course, she didn't play a full game. She hasn't the first one either. Um, and then, of course, the they'll wrap up their final scrimmage on... Thir next Thursday, this coming Thursday. So uh, they do show those on YouTube, I do believe. So if you're wanting to see how we look, uh, just go on YouTube and uh, check them out. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about the Milwaukee Tennis Classic. Um, give me a minute. So, as I mentioned before, I have no clue about tennis. I am not a tennis guru, but I do like Husker athletics, and part of that is tennis. So, I am learning tennis as we speak. I, um, I don't know how it goes. Like, I figure, you know, you go get your NCAA regionals, your conference tournaments and all, all that I get that but you know the scoring and whatnot it just blows my damn mind but uh, you know for the sake of the show I I do talk about tennis and um, we'll mention what went on there in Milwaukee uh, so we have Calvin Mueller and Leo Lindquist who are both sophomores they uh appeared in this Milwaukee Tennis Classic. Um, and I was looking at the uh, tournament on the website, you know, because there, there's no way to watch it or anything, you know. You just have to look online and see what's going on in it. And um, uh, it, it, the whole format confuses me. So... I, would, I wish I knew how to, like, show what I'm looking at on the internet to put it on here, but I'm not that technically advanced yet, but uh, I'll try to explain it the best I can. And that is, um, there's, like, eight different brackets for the men's singles. You have, like, a north draw, a west draw, east, south. And then you have Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest, draw, like, and I'm just sitting there going, like, and, and are, like, and then you have the doubles, and there's only one bracket for that, which uh, Calvin Mueller and Leo Linquit both actually made the final in that and lost, so... It looks like they are runner-up in the doubles in the Milwaukee Tennis Classic now. Um, on the East stage, Leo Linquet drops a match to Dusan Milanovic of Mississippi State. 
and I'm totally gonna screw these names up because a lot of foreigners play tennis, so bear with me. Um, this is for all you tennis fans, by the way, and you are more than welcome to chime in and correct me on a lot of things because I didn't have no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to tennis. Um, so, uh, Calvin Mueller on we're remaining in the East stage, by the way, he defeats Gabriel Huber of Wisconsin. In the second round, Mueller loses to Palmit Sornlaxup of Toledo. So that's like it for the East stage. Nobody wins in that. And the West draw, Leo Linquet loses the first round to Thomas Zlato Hlavik of Wisconsin for the North draw. Calvin Mueller drops his match to Liam Crawl of SMU. So today, however, and I have not looked, and I'll look later and see how we do. But in the Northwest draw, Calvin Mueller will face off against Benito Sanchez Martinez of Mississippi State in the semifinal round of that draw. So uh, that's all we got going today, tennis wise. I don't even know if it's over yet. I imagine it's probably close to done. But um, yeah, that that's your tennis news of the day. I don't know if like, the fall events in tennis correspond with the spring. I don't know if these are just training grounds. I will learn as time goes on with this tennis ordeal. Um, like I said, I'm no expert. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping some of you that watches this are and can correct me and educate me on this stuff. But, uh, yeah, I have no clue what I'm talking about when it comes to tennis, so we're going to move on. Well, we'll just hold on a second because I forgot to mention that Leo Linquet wins his first two matches against Adam Kovac of Toledo and Max Salagi of SMU due to an injury, and this was in the uh, south draw for the singles. Uh... And he will face off against Gabriel Huber of Wisconsin to finish that up. So, um, that is who we got going. And then, um, of course, Calvin Mueller will face off against Benito Sanchez Martinez in that other draw I mentioned earlier. So, we had that going for us. Uh, now on to volleyball. Um... Give me a minute. So we played uh, Ohio State earlier. And uh, like I said, I took some lazy ass note. This might be a pretty short show today, be honest. Uh, the note taking was just hurting my head. I don't know. I, I just did a bad lazy job this week on note taking. But Ohio State, to be brutal... Um, you know, that day, I was at work at like 5.30 in the morning, you know. So, you know, I work long hours. And sometimes those long hours do catch up. And I get tired as a dog. I was tired watching this game. So, like, I was ready for bed before the match even started. But, of course, I had to, as a Husker fan, I had to stay up and watch it. But I was so dog tired. Like, I had a hard time keeping my eyes open to begin with. Um, yeah, hoping for a sweep. And did we sweep them or did they take a set? I believe we swept them. Um, but I do remember as I was watching the game, it dawned on me that every time we play a third set, it seems to be a str struggle for us. Like some kind of dog fight. Like, and it seems like uh, when we're playing a team, like the first two sets, most of the time, we're, we kill them. And it just seems so hopeless for the other team. But 
I think what happens in the third set is we're visually watching the other team like get better because they're getting spanked so bad. And then they adjust and uh, settle. And uh, and I think they kind of embrace the moment they're up against a really good team and they uh, battle us well. And I, I that's just my theory. I think that's what happens during these matches, uh, especially when we're playing them. The, the other team, they... They somehow get better. We saw it with Kentucky for sure. I mean, as we were hammering them. And then somehow they found a way to force a fourth set on us and made that a dogfight. So, you know, to be brutally honest, it would be it would kind of suck to play some of these teams again. <laughs> uh, because I think they when they're playing us like during the match they get better but not only that but they they will get better as the season goes along so anybody we play ultimately ends up becoming a pretty dangerous team from what they have to endure from us so it's a compliment on us but we're we're also making the game of volleyball better and that's just something i notice um and by the way, this was Ohio State's seventh consecutive match against a ranked opponent. They were not afraid to schedule a very tough non-conference schedule. Like, they, I guess they just like to be battle-tested, which is fine. Uh, I don't know. I, I heard Jessica Cody say the other night on Sports Nightly, and I don't know, excuse me, I don't know if she was referring to, to Ohio State during a segment, but she was saying, you know, being in the Big Ten's a gauntlet enough, so wouldn't it be, and your RPI would be pretty well built up too. So wouldn't it just be more beneficial to schedule cupcakes before Big Ten play? And maybe... I mean, you'd certainly get your wins, I would think, but I mean, I don't know if you'd necessarily be ready for the Big Ten season as well. I mean, I guess you just as well schedule a non comp like a very tough non conference slate as it is to get ready for the Big Ten because it is a tough uh, league to play volleyball in so I don't know I I guess I can see it both ways but um uh you know good on Ohio State um and of course we did win this game in a sweep and it was our best start since 2016 so that's pretty exciting to know that um uh you know because Let's put it this way, our national championship, our last one was in 2017. So best start since 2016. So this is a better start than 2017. So that that, that gives me a glimmer of hope, um, to be brutally honest. And of course, during this game, you know, you got to give the players shout outs. Uh, Becca Alec, Andy Jackson, Merritt Beeson, Harper Murray, uh, we did not see Lindsey Krause. We saw Lainey Choboy back, though, finally. It's good to see her back in, uh, in her witty ways. But, uh, you know, they, the consistent players. That You know, that's just what they are. They're Every one of these players, even the ones on the bench, can start for anybody in the country. And, you know, you just got to – we're very spoiled when it comes to volleyball for the University of Nebraska. We, we really are. Um, it's just uh, we haven't ever missed a tournament, ever. And we always make big runs in the tournament. We're always at least in the semifinals or something, you know. So, it, I mean – 
what can I say? It, it's a very good volleyball team. Another great year for it. But this group's special. No senior, and they're just dangerous as hell. <laughs> um, just a really, really good team. Um, the, just the shit they do is just miraculous, you know. If, if you never even watch, and I can't imagine you being a Husker fan not watching a volleyball game, but if you haven't watched it, you to see for yourself, it's just a truly incredible. It's not like high school volleyball, you know. I mean, this is big girl volleyball. Like, it, it's just insane. Um, but yeah. So now tonight we got a game against Minnesota, who you know they're raving about, but they haven't really. Um, I don't know. Gave me any reason to worry. I mean, I don't know if that's right or wrong, but they don't seem to wow me as a number 12 team in the country. And I'm trying to uh, go to Minnesota site, see what their schedule was, because their schedule didn't really seem uh, that... Uh, it looked like they scheduled people to get wins in the... Uh, non-conference side of things, but I could be wrong. But I remember looking at it earlier and thinking, uh, th this team just don't scare me. But uh, let's see. They played Northern Iowa in an exhibition. They did beat TCU, which is a good win. They, they swept Baylor, uh, did lose to Texas, in turn, Texas is struggling. Uh, got swept by Florida. Uh, beat Oregon. Okay. Lost uh, four sets to Stanford. Beat High Point three to one. Uh, lost to Creighton. Beat I. I don't know. It, it seems like they can play good volleyball, but that it looks like they have their off days. Nebraska hasn't really had an off day. Well, and on their off days, they still won. So, I don't know. Um, I, I, for, for me, it, I think we got it. I mean, of course, they got to play the game too. So, but I'm not really worried about it. Uh, I personally feel like a sweep on Minnesota, but I could be totally wrong and totally eat my words on that. But, uh, yeah, so that does it for volleyball. Uh, let's move on to soccer. So, like I said, I'm not burnout or anything, guys. I'm just I had a really tired week. I don't know what it is. I think it's still just hot out. Like, it's in the 80s. Which I know some of you think that's not hot, but to me, I'm a fat ass. It, it's hot. But anyway, um, I don't know if it's that. I, I've just been tired all week. Um, just, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely not a burnout. It's just, uh, I mean, too early. To be, why would I be burnt out by Husker Athletics? But anyway, it, I don't know what it is. Just lazy writing this week. It's all on me. So this might be one of my worst shows. Um, but I guess that happens. But uh, so we talked about the volleyball. Now we're on to soccer for the week. And uh, so we lost one today, a heartbreaker. Uh, and we shouldn't have lost that one. Uh, but uh, we beat Ohio State earlier in the week. So that helps in the run of things for the Big Ten and uh, tournament seating and all that, you know. So, uh, huge win against Ohio State. We needed that. We got it on the road because this was a tough slate going on the road at Ohio State, then going to Pennsylvania and playing there. I mean, our, our ladies battled tough. Uh, and I'll get to that Penn State game in a minute, but they did battle tough in that. 
but uh, it, it was pretty dominant against Ohio State for the most part. Uh, I mean, they're, Ohio State didn't really do anything to make me worry about that one. They, like, we had more shots on goals, uh, t- took more shots, uh, everything. Like, Ohio State just could not stop our uh, attack at all. I mean, they had a hard time with it. And Ohio State's a, I mean, they're talking like they're a really good team, which I believe they are. But, yeah, they just had a rough time against it. Maybe they had a bad day. I don't know. But they just could not do anything against us. And so um, with that, we got the win. And what was the final score? I should have pulled that up. Uh, uh, dang it. Well, anyway, I I think it was two to one. We ended up winning two to one. So, um, great effort by us to win that thing. And um, then today we went on the road to Penn State, and that game, my God, like so. I was sitting there watching it, and um, you know, back and forth we went. I mean, just a defensive battle, like I. Uh, figured it would have been um, but yeah playing the number four team in the country uh, number two in the RPI thing which I think means more than the United Soccer rankings or whatever but uh, um, had a good decent game against them um, we uh, it was like not until nine minutes left in the game you know and it was a slugfest. Like, we were kicking each other, uh, getting headbutted in the face. Like, all the, like, women's soccer is rough. I, I know people laugh at women's soccer, but if you actually watch it, it's rough. But, uh, especially collegiate. I don't know about, like, Olympic soccer or whatever, but if you watch collegiate soccer, that, that soccer gets rough. And it's really fun to watch. I'm pretty new watching it i've been watching it for a few years but um i really picked up on it and it's a lot of fun to watch i think it's funner to watch the men play to be honest and i think it's just because men are more finesse in it versus women they just get after it and they they ain't afraid to kick each other in the shins or headbutt each other or pull each other's hair and all that sort of thing uh they're really it's really fun to watch but uh, we played Penn State today. Nine minutes left in the game. Uh, you know, after back and forth. And we, we had to hold on the game the whole time. Like, we were in the box way more than Penn State was the entire game. But Penn State had sort of an open look at a goal. And uh, who was it? I want to say it was Eleanor Dale. She went to try to retrieve the ball back from late, but she like slipped. It was raining out there, but she slipped and like her hand like pushed a gal onto the ground and that awarded them a free kick. And if any of you are familiar with soccer, free kicks are almost gimmies. Um, Hardly anybody misses those. So, so, of course, Penn State makes their free goal kick or whatever. And uh, we just didn't have enough time to get a goal of our own. We had a plenty of looks, but we just could not get it done. So, nobody even scored. This was the first game where uh, we went scoreless. Um, but at the same time, you can't really hang your hat. It was against... Uh, uh, Penn State uh, on the road, number four team in the country. You know, we we're on the road all week. So, can't hang your head on that. Um, very good effort by the ladies. And this does not by far run our season. You know, we're still playing for good seating in the conference tournament. And like last year, we made a heck of a run. And, you know, this game against Penn State actually gives me hope. We can play them again, and we can beat them. I know we can. 
uh, you know, we played Penn State like this. We can play anybody almost in the country. I mean, I don't know about the UCLA's or whatever, but, you know, this is number four team in country, and we played them like that. I mean, on the road, you know, already coming off a road win against Ohio State and then having to go there, you know, and we played like that. Uh, I have a lot of hope for these ladies. Um, so, yeah, if you're a soccer fan, don't hang your head on this. But um, anyway, so that pretty much does it for the week. Um, so on third, so I get a little bit of the break. Uh, my my shit don't really start till Thursday, so I I can take a little break from writing and all that. So on Thursday, softball has their intra squad scrimmage. Uh, then soccer has a game at home versus Rutgers. So that should be a win and should get things rolling for us. Uh, Friday, women's tennis goes to the Baylor invite. Uh, cross country uh, competes at the Gans Creek Classic. Uh, baseball versus Omaha. So we're starting fall ball for baseball. So that'll give us a glimpse of what to look for. Um, see what Will Bolton Company's got in store for us for this upcoming spring. Uh, volleyball does have a, a game versus Purdue. Another home game too, so that's awesome. Um, or is it? I'll have to look on that. Uh, men and women's uh, basketball opening night with the DDG. I don't know who that is. Do you know who DDG is? I don't. Let me know in the comments. What What's his big song or whatever. Um, Saturday, of course, men, so men and women ha have a ITA All-American. This thing runs till October 8th. So it's like a big ass tournament. So, what's that mean? Like, what happens if you win the ITA All-American? Are you an All-American? I don't know. Um, so, football, of course, against Michigan. And I'll be at that game, by the way. So, you might get a gut reaction out of me, but you may not get a full show. I don't know yet. I am yet to see how that'll work out. But I'll for sure give you a gut reaction, whether it's at the stadium or in the hotel room. So we'll see about that. Uh, and then volleyball is up against Indiana. That the, At Indiana. Okay. So that don't make sense. We I'll have to look at I know we play Purdue in volleyball, but not a day before we go to Or no, maybe we're at Purdue. I don't know, guys. <laughs> um, but anyway, Sunday, we uh, play Omaha in softball for a fall game. Uh, soccer at Northwestern, and then men's golf at the Badger Invitational. So that's what's on tap for next week. So pretty busy week, but it all starts on Thursday. So I get a pretty decent break in between all of that but anyway guys i hope you did enjoy the show despite the laziness i displayed <laughs> um hopefully it'll be a better show next week or if i give you a show we will see on that i i'll let you know when i do my gut reaction on saturday after michigan but um Anyways, guys, I'm going to sign off on here. I'm going to celebrate a Dolphins victory, huge victory against my wife's Broncos. Um, I don't know how she'll feel about that. But, uh, yeah, so um, take care, guys. I hope you have a wonderful week this week. Uh, go Big